So, in Skull and Bones, there are 11 different ships available, and in this video, we are going to go through the best ship to use for both PvE and PvP scenarios. I've already done builds for these ships on the channel, and I've done a couple of videos for crafting some of them, like the ones you get earlier in the game. But if we go to our Knowledge tab, we go to the Codex, we're going to see all 11 ships, and the five we're going to cover are the higher tier ones, because these start at like tier 3 and uh, rank 1 and 2. Whereas all of these begin at rank 5. So we're going to cover the higher tier, the 5 final ships that you'll get in the game. So again, if you want to watch builds and stuff for them and see gameplay with them, there are videos on the channel for it. But starting off with the Bark, this is going to be best for group play and healing teammates. So even if you're not in a group, but you are going to do PvE stuff where there might be other players involved, you can take this ship along, stick some repair bombards and stuff on it, and you're going to be able to heal other players. This ship is a support type, it's specialised in aiding friendly ships, the support excels in providing assists that can help turn the tide of a battle. And the reason you're going to take this one if you're playing in group play and wanting to heal your teammates, is because the perk revitalised restores 0.5% of severe damage and 0.5% of your whole damage, or your whole health, per second and that happens for nearby ships as well nearby friendly ships but it also restores 15 percent of your stamina 10 percent of your severe damage and 60 percent more of your whole health on a friendly ship while using a repair weapon so it's really really good for healing teammates you can use this ship solo you can use any ship solo you can pretty much use these however you want but this is basically the best benefits you're going to get from each of the ships and next up, we have the Sandbuck. This is a DPS ship. It specializes in dealing damage and status effects, and the DPS favors an aggressive playstyle. Now, this by far is the absolute best ship to use in PvP. I'm actually going to do a PvP-specific build. It's coming on the channel very, very soon. I'm going to do a PvP build for it because I haven't really taken a deep dive into the PvP stuff in this game. I've played it, but I've never done videos for it, not really. But the main reason is because you have a perk called Scorched. It deals 5,000 burning damage when you apply the Ablaze effect to an enemy ship. Ablaze is going to be applied to enemies in a radius of 150 meters, and it increases damage to ships that have the Ablaze effect by an extra 50%. Is a really really strong ship and if you've got the blue spectre or you can get some sort of sea fire along with fire bombards and things like that you're going to have a really really good time in this ship and the brig has essentially been nerfed in the game it used to be everyone was using the brig in pvp because you had a faster speed you could get away from ships like the sandbuck but ubisoft put out an update for the game and they made it so that once you are carrying something like a legendary treasure map when you're doing the cutthroat cargo event you are capped with your speed so the brig can only go like 14 knots instead of going up to speeds of 18 so i'm going to say my personal opinion the sandbuck is the top dog when it comes to pvp and then definitely not forgetting about the brig the brig is another dps so it specializes in dealing damage and status effects the dps favors an aggressive play style I'm going to say this is best for your typical PvE content, but mainly for your manufactory collection runs, because these runs for the helm, for the end game pieces of 8, can get very, very tedious. They're incredibly time consuming. So having the extra speed on this ship is really, really beneficial to doing those collection runs. And not only that, it doesn't work too great in PvP, but in PvE, you have a perk called Bullhorn. It increases damage from ramming by 45%, and it reduces the duration of torn sails effect, or the effect, by 80% and it applies flooded to an enemy ship upon ramming so in pvp players are going to know what they're doing when they see a brig they're going to be moving out of the way of your ramming attempts whereas the uh, ai the npcs in pve content are not really going to do that they do try every now and then but you're going to have a much better time being able to ram into them you're going to deal increased damage and then i mean if you do take it into pvp it's not an awful ship it's just i think the sandbuck is better if players are trying to tear your sails it is going to reduce the duration of that effect by 80% if they are successful so it's good for both I, I would say this is sort of the what do you call it like, like the pinnacle of like being a balanced ship for pve and pvp but i would much rather use it for the manufactory collection runs in the end game and then we have the snow which is an absolute beast for both pve and pvp again but this one's not a dps this is your tank ship 
It's specialized in bracing against incoming damage. It excels in defense. And the reason for it, it has 50,000 health. You can increase that with some of the furniture and stuff you can get in the game. And it recovers a brace strength, which it has 25,000 of by 4% per second whilst you're bracing. And it increases the brace strength by 50% and the recovery by 150%. So this is really, really good for keeping you alive because you've got a massive health pool. And not only that, whilst you're bracing, your brace is coming back and bracing is going to stop you taking the damage. So this is incredible for both PvE and PvP. Like if you're, say for an example, you're in a cutthroat event, there's a full lobby of like six players. There's five of you. You've got the treasure map. They're all coming for you. This is probably your best bet of staying alive because it is such a tanky ship. And then in PvE, if you're taking on rogues and stuff and you're struggling a little bit in the brig, just switch over to this because it's so good at defending and you might be able to keep yourself alive a little bit obviously it's got a lot less damage than other ships because it's a tank but it's still a really good ship and then last but definitely not least is the padawa kang and this is probably one of the first high tier ships you're going to get your hands on it's a dps ship it's specialized in dealing damage and status effects the dps favors an aggressive play style and this ship i'm going to say is best for if you are plundering or if you're doing any sort of pve content against groups of enemies especially when it comes to like the rogues and stuff i wouldn't really sail around in a padawa kang and do pvp events you can obviously there's going to be a lot of times in the game where pvp is just like like one or two extra players sometimes you can even do pvp events on your own but i would try and stick to the pve content in skull and bones with the padawa kang and i would try and focus primarily on the different like military bases and forts and things like that to go and plunder or even just your basic settlements because the perk on this is called detonate and explosive hits have a 70 percent chance of triggering an explosion which deals a thousand damage within a 125 meter blast radius and that increases to a hundred percent instead of 70 percent with the explosive hits if the target ship is ablaze but this ship also increases damage to structures by 50 percent so the towers that are at forts and stuff and your weapon damage radius gets increased by 12 percent as well so when it comes to the padua kang and you're plundering if you stick on fire bombards and you have the mortar that explosive damage is going to be incredible against those towers and stuff to take them down so that it's just that you and the ships in them like in that fight to plunder whichever base you want like if you want to call it a base whichever base you are plundering and obviously at the end of the day it's entirely up to you which ship you take into which activity in the game but those are my recommendations for the best ships in different pve and pvp scenarios in skull and bones and on that note that's going to do it for the video let me know your thoughts and stuff about the different ships in the game in the comments i will see you guys in the next one i hope you enjoyed it i hope it helped you out thank you for watching